in 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse number 11 and 12. And after him was Shemaiah, the son of Ag, the Herorite. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop where was a piece of ground full of lentils. And the people fled from the Philistines. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines. And the Lord wrought a great victory. Here in this portion of the word of God, David, not long for heaven, is reflecting on some of the tremendous battles that his mighty men were engaged in. In one of those battles, David recounts a certain man by the name of Shemaiah. Now catch this. Shemaiah was not a preacher. He was not an evangelist. But Shemaiah was a man who put to good cause the training he had received from David. Shemaiah longed, or should I say, Shemaiah along with a band of other men were a part of that crowd that came to David when they were in distress, when they were in debt, and when they were discontented. In fact, the Bible says this concerning that particular account in 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse number 1 and 2. Note the text with me. The Bible says, David therefore departed thence and escaped from the cave Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And every one that was in distress and every one that was in debt and every one that was discontented gathered themselves unto him and he became a captain over them. And there were with him about 400 men. So we see here, David is reflecting over these particular men to whom he would train. And these men would become great men in the sight of God. Well, David is mesmerized here in chapter, if you go back with me to 2 Samuel chapter 23. And as we read there in verse number 11 and 12, David, attention is drawn to this man, Shemaiah. Now, what was so special about this particular battle that made King David want to reflect over it. You'll note there in verse number 11, the Bible tells us that Shemaiah was engaged in battle as he stood his ground, protecting this ground full of lentils. And the Bible says that all the people fled from the Philistines. Now, David realized that here was a man who was willing to die, catch it, for a hill of beans. We use that term in a negative sense today. For example, when we say a hill of beans, we're often given the impression of one who is not worth anything, for we often say that person is not worth a hill of beans. Now, here, of course, Shemaiah felt different about that issue. You see, beans or lentils were a form of food supply that was necessary for the, the survival of David's men as well as others. And Shemaiah must have thought, this is one hill that I am willing to die on. You see, Shemaiah was willing to die for, again, a hill of beings. Let me ask you, friend, that's listening tonight, what hill are you willing to die on? Now, let's switch gears just a little bit. I call your attention to Numbers, chapter number 31. Numbers, chapter 31. And in this portion of the Word of God, we're going to read about a man to whom the Bible describes as a man by the name of Balaam. Here in Numbers, chapter 31, you'll bear with me as we turn there in the Word of God. Look with me there at verse number 7 and 8. The Bible says these words concerning this man. In verse number seven, the Bible says, And they warred against the Midianites, as the Lord commanded Moses, and they slew all the males. Now note here in verse number eight, 
The Bible says, and they slew the king of Midian besides the rest of them that were slain, namely, and the Bible gives us the names to which Joshua, the man of God, was able to defeat here under the leadership of the man Moses. You'll note here the Bible says, Evi, Rakim, and Zer, and Hur, and Reba, five kings of Midian. And then the Bible says, Balaam, also the son of Beor, they slew with the sword. Now, this is interesting because this man, Balaam, his name is often mentioned in the Old Testament as one being of great dependence on God. In fact, Balaam was closer to God than many for a time. Balaam had a great level of confidence in God for a period of time. He was connected with God for a period of time. He even had a level of communication with God for a period of time. And yet here we are told that Balaam perished on the hill of the ungodly. You see, here was a man who decided to join up with a crowd of people who were against the people of God. He decided to die again on the hill of the ungodly. I read in the word of God of others who made some bad decisions concerning what hill they chose to die on. Lot stood on the hill of compromise and lost everything he had in Genesis chapter 19. Absalom stood on the hill of mutiny and conspiracy against his own dad, David, and lost his life for it. That's given to us in 2 Samuel chapter 18, verse number 14. Judas Iscariot, and we'll hear more about him in this lesson, but Judas stood on the hill of betrayal and greed and hung himself as a result of giving place to foolish decision-making. That's given to us over there in Matthew chapter 27, verse number 5. You see, my friend, all of these that we just mentioned made a decision to which hill they chose to die on. Let me ask you, friend, what hill are you willing to die on? Well, I want us to see something interesting here, and I want to be sure to tell you that as far as As those who make the choice to live for the Lord Jesus Christ, they must be careful what hill they choose to die on. Now, there are three hills I want to bring to your attention that I, for one, am not willing to die on. The first hill that comes to my mind is the hill of compromise. The hill of compromise. If you have your Bible still close by, I want you to turn with me to Galatians chapter number two. In this portion of God's word, we read of the Apostle Paul confronting the man Peter. Now note the text. I want you to look there in second, or should I say, Galatians chapter two. Note with me there in verse number 11. The Bible says these words in Galatians 2, 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to blame. Note with me the following passages. The Bible says, for before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews disassembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. And then note verse 14. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? And then note verse 16. The Bible says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the words of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, 
even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. What do we see here? We see Peter attempting to compromise the message of the gospel. Hey, friend, when you get the right gospel, your want to will change. When you get the right gospel, your words will change. When you, my friend, get the right gospel, your wardrobe will change. You see, it's the end of the day, which is true. And we understand this concerning the words that Paul brings to this man, Peter, how important it is for us to understand that man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Oh, there are some hills that you and I must be willing to die on, but one of those hills must not be the hill of compromise. God is not looking for his people to compromise one iota. We need to stay focused in on what God would have for us to do, not veering off to the left or to the right, but moving straight ahead. Well, friend, I look at the clock and it seems my time has left. What hill are you willing to die on? Will you be willing to die on the hill of salvation? Trust Jesus today. Receive him as your savior. Will you respond to the message? Will you answer the call? And when the war is over and the we won. You've been listening to Pastor Curtis McMiller of Heritage Baptist Church with an encouragement to answer the call. Call us at 262-654-4665 or go on our website, www.heritagebaptistkenosha.com. That's www.heritagebaptistkenosha.com or 262-654-4665. Be a part of Answer the Call. Airtime for Answer the Call has been paid by Heritage Baptist Church, Kenosha, Wisconsin.